from looking at it on the Watson side because again we've seen over the last couple of weeks it seems like it's gone from the NFL saying we're not going to take anything less from a year now it's all of a sudden becoming it's swinging more towards at least the momentum in favor of Watson and this tweet from Josina Anderson where she took an excerpt from the uh from the uh, NFL conduct policy saying that everyone who is part of the league, and again, that's bold, underlined, everyone who is part of the league must refrain from conduct detrimental to the integrity of public confidence in the NFL. Uh, that includes owners, coaches, players, other team employees, game officials, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and so with that being said, you know, that's why you're seeing a lot of people point towards the, the Robert Kraft incident, as well as the fact that, I mean, Daniel Snyder is still probably filming the I'm on a boat music video round two right now at this point. Uh, so, you know, the fact that he's been dodging Congress. So at this point, you know, I think that that's something that if you're Sue Robinson and just taking the facts, you have to take that into account with previous precedents being taken with the ownership that, as the NFL has said, is held to a quote unquote higher standard. Yeah, and again, I think th there's been some conversations about that argument being made by Deshaun Watson's team and the NFLPA. I think it's a pretty sound argument. I understand why people don't like when you point the finger and say, like, well, what about this? And that doesn't always work in your favor. But I think to point to, in this instance, a conduct policy that's supposed to be all encompassing for players, coaches, owners, everybody, and you're enforcing it different ways for different players. Like, yeah, I think there's a valid case there that you're you're not there's you know there's no there's not equality in the way that this is enforced among everybody. Um, so I thought it was I think it's pretty reasonable why Deshaun Watson and his team pointed to that and brought that up. Uh, no matter how you feel about what he did or um, wh where you stand on that side of the conversation, I think like him bringing up that point is fair because these owners have done nefarious things themselves that we've all criticized. And they get slap slap on the wrist slap on the wrist board. So, um, yeah, I I, th I think that's that's certainly the case here. I think that's part of the the reason why she she mentioned that excerpt and why she pointed to it. I know she did mention the one word in there that kind of can be interpreted differently and has kind of the vague broad meaning is irresponsible. And that's the one I keep going back to of why I think Deshaun Watson is getting some sort of suspension because you can take certain language from the the personal conduct policy and say like okay. He did something that feels irresponsible, or did he make the league look bad? That's another element of the personal conduct policy. What he did, his behavior could be construed as he did. He he certainly didn't paint the league in a good light. So maybe that's where she falls back on to give out a punishment. But yeah, the the one year plus that we've seen, I think that argument's kind of gone out the window, both based on reports we've heard about the lack of hard evidence proving that there was forced, you know, anything was forced, anything was coerced, yada, 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 from like, I know Mike Floria pointed that out, but also just from the fact that, yeah, you're, you're looking at the owners and saying, you don't enforce this thing equally. So why should it be enforced? Why should we throw the book at Deshaun Watson?